here's my opinion. And, and you guys know the life. So, you know, I'm going to give it to people in the public that don't really understand it. Our life is a small network. We all know each other. Each guy from each city. And if we don't know each other direct, one of our friends knows the next guy. So we know the reality. It's hard for the public to know the reality. But exactly you know, by doing all our shows, we're trying to teach them the reality and the treachery. And this is just one more step towards treachery, but not the violence. But I'll make this very clear, you know, simple and clear for people that don't know. So there is no comeback after I say what I'm going to say. And the, and people understand it. Okay. There's things that make gangsters and, you know, street guys and tough guys and intelligent guys. Okay. One of them is education and intelligence. Okay. So Calandri is neither one of those. He's, he's a fucking buffoon, a dumb kid. So he's not that. Second is your earning capability. Are you an earner over the years? Are you an earner now? By what you respect what level as a gentleman? Are you a businessman? He's a complete imbecile. He ain't got two cents his whole life. So that's the second. Third thing is the integrity of not killing women, kids, or regular people. We do heists. We do different things. This kid killed a woman, uh, a housewife. So anything that the kid says, people need to just go through those three things. He can't combat one thing I just said. He's not a killer. He's not a tough guy. Uh, he's a desperate kid trying to make his way, which a lot of us guys, and Larry knows, we reached our hand out to help this kid because, you know, we felt bad for him. He's trying to change his life. He's talking that he's a holy roly and he's swearing on his, you know, his dead mother that lost, you know, died, unfortunately, like we all lose our parents or something. So, you know, we felt bad for, for the kid. But, this is the thank you. He tried to sleep with my friend's wife in Florida. He tried to sleep with my other friend's wife that Larry knows very well. We all try to help him financially. I got him a job in Pittsburgh. He tried to rob my friend that I got him a job in Pittsburgh. So the kid is what he is. And he ain't no tough guy. Some of those bad Avenue kids were very tough guys. They were young, tough guys. They did a lot of things. Jimmy's not one of them. And, you know, as far as bank robberies and these stories this kid talks about, he robs safety deposit boxes out of a wall like a junkie. He's not a, an arm robber. He's not a fucking killer. He's not a teller. All the things I said. And I hate to address it, but I need to because he's dressing us down. And we need people to really understand. All of us still are friends. Every one of us stay in touch with each other. We go out to dinner with each other. We, we stick our hands out. We help each other when we need it. And we're all gentlemen to each other. So I happen to have more aggressive personality. Larry's more of a cool, laid-back guy. And, you know, I'm aggressive. Everybody knows that. But the difference is I'm fact-checked. You know, through these guys, these guys through me and other guys. Uh, Forbes, the article about me is fact-checked through the whole government, through other witnesses, through. So people can read this stuff and say, okay, you know, this guy's legitimate. But what I just said about Jimmy, he can't possibly come back what I just said. I made some valid points. And this kid's just a dumb kid that is trying to be relevant. And, and, and listen, even to the point when he was in McKeon with me, I'm going to tell you something, and I never exposed the kid. Patty De La Rose, Russo was there, who everybody knows. Mikey Spinelli was there. Anthony Sorrentoro, Bonanno became an, a captain later on. He wasn't at the time. He was in my unit. Joe Gambino was in my unit. He never ate with me and Joe Gambino. That's a lie. And when I set him after Jeannie Gotti, which I did, he was hysterical, crying, pushing him, slapping at him. And he did slap him. He's too scared now to say it. But after he slapped him, he checked himself in the hole because he was afraid of us. He was afraid of him. And he came up with some fake story that he had an argument with a guard. And anybody understands what he did. That's why he went to the hole. Now, will I address this kid again? I guess on my show I'll do it. Maybe Larry will join me. And, you know, and we'll put it to rest. And I'm not going to give him any more attention. And That's I hated exactly doing this. How I, I feel. Really bad for the kid. But... I changed my life. So some of the series guys that try to kill me became my best friends. Joey Calco is my friend. Joey Calco, unfortunately, back then, he did things like we all regret. He did some murders. One of them was against Jimmy Calandria, his friend, supposedly. But the problem I have with it is Jimmy had 30 years to kill Joey. He never did anything. Yet, he's texting Jimmy Cal Calco. He's trying to talk to him. He's liking his pictures on Instagram. So these are things he's just full of shit. He can't, he can't take that back. And as far as a, a fighter, I try to teach him to get the box. Tell him to put a video up again of himself, handle himself. Larry can handle himself. Most of us can handle ourselves. We're in and out of gyms. This guy can't even handle himself with his hands. 
So it's best for him to just keep his mouth shut so we don't embarrass him anymore. Really, that's it in a nutshell. Well, well said. Well said. Very articulated. And um, so, like, like I, I don't know the story personally, Johnny, about the the Gene thing. So, what? Why did you put him up to slapping Gene Gotti? And like, what? How did it lead up to that? And what happened? Uh, I wrote a book again. It's called Ma- Mafia International. It's out uh, with Lou Romano. It's uh, and it's going to discuss what he did with Gene. What, what Gene did with uh, is he disrespected Joe Gambino, who's a gentleman. Joe Gambino was eating with us, and he told guys in there that he was a cook only. And by doing that, he, uh, he set Joe off. They started back and forth, and he put his hands on Joe. Joe went back at him. Later on, uh, he set the Cleveland black guys on Genie. So and he, while this was going on, and I'm going to get into the names that were there with me, we heard a guy, Ali Calabrese, real bad. We almost killed him in that. Me, a guy, uh, Lee Whitley, Danny Chris, and Nino Paul Evacchio. So I'm good with names. I remember every, everything. After that, we, we took it to Gene. I had a guy, James Perry, who was a bank robber doing 27 years, one of my cellmates. I made him go after Gene. He also slapped him. He hit him with a chair. He threw him around. He did everything at that time in front of the whole unit because we were teaching Gene Cosa Nostra, which we shouldn't be teaching him. I'm right. Albanian. I live by their rules and laws since I'm a baby. I says, but he couldn't live by his own rules because of his ego and he got out of line with Joe, and he and he got checked real bad for it. And we nonstop abused him. And we told J- Jimmy Calandri at the time, because Jimmy was his, his do boy. He was putting his chair out. He was cleaning his cell. He was going to get his laundry. He was going to pick up his commissary. <laughs> he was no tough guy with Gene. That was the last thing. He was a little dog with him. And when I got there, I told him, listen, you act like a fucking man, or you check yourself in the hole. I says, but if you behave like this anymore... We're going to give you a fucking beat. So now go back to Jeannie and go after him. Now, Patty was with me at the time. Eddie Hannon was there. Richie Oliveri was there. I could throw names like crazy. Marchese brothers from Pittsburgh were there. Uh, Mikey Spinelli, who was also a friend of mine when I came home, I went and took care of his family. Did some favors for him. So these are my personal friends. These ain't guys like Patty. I know Patty since we're kids. You know, I grew up with him. So when this guy's talking like he's, he's in favor with any of these guys, it's a joke. Now, Joe Gambino and these guys, obviously, they're not. They're, these guys are doing what they're doing. They don't talk. They're not verbal. But some of these other guys are very verbal. Like Louis A. Dino GQ from the Latin Kings. I made him take 60 books of stamps off the team. Uh, Daryl Johnson Butch from Philadelphia, who was, who was on uh, Death Row. He's a Philadelphia. He's a friend of mine, black guy. He went after Genie also. So when guys talk like Jimmy, he better get his facts straight. And I, I, invite him like a gentleman with Larry on my show, on your show, on Larry's, whatever we're doing. And we'll talk. And, and I don't want to belittle this kid, but he needs to be put in his place. So open in his mouth. I says, then when guys are talking, like this, they don't want to be gentlemen. We all socialize with each other. We're all very friendly with each other. You're not going to get away with trying to sleep with one of our friend's wives after he took you in your, his house, made you money, did the right thing to him, you, and then you try to bite his hand. He's lucky he wasn't the old days because we bring him in and we get rid of him the way we right. did. And, you know, and I'll, tell, I'll leave the, the rest of the, the people that are listening to this or eventually listen to this. He has a good friend of his when they were kids, Chris Pachillo. Now, Chris mm-hmm. also was, you know, when he was young, he was a wild kid. He wasn't on the level of Larry and the rest of these guys that, you know, some of our friends that were in a, a serious level, and we were we were with serious guys doing serious things. These guys were young guys trying to, you know, make some money, whatever. But when you see a guy like his friend, Chris Pachilla, who's very wealthy now, not give him a mm-hmm. job, you got to ask yourself why. Mm. Why won't he help his friend? Why won't he give him two cents? Why doesn't he bother him? And then everybody can understand the answer. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So when he's throwing names out about some of his crew, or whether it was Paulie, well, if you really felt that strongly about Paulie, why did you take care of it 30 years ago, 20 years ago? So stop the nonsense. You don't take, you don't take care of no business. You're not that guy. And as, as far as I stay with guys, I say I changed my life. I stay with serious killers. I mention them a lot on my shows. These guys were my enemies. We're, we're like best friends now. We talk. We respect each other. The war is over for all of us. We moved yeah. on with our lives. Now, this kid claims he moved on with his life, but if he did, he wouldn't be talking like he did about Joey Calco. And to keep the record straight, Joey Calco will bust him up and down the street with his hands. 
Joey doesn't want that. Joey wants a different life. Don't dress down Joey. He's a gentleman. He's a nice guy trying to make his life. If this guy wants to talk like that, get back on the street. Don't be a rat. Because you became a rat years ago at 20-something years old, 22 years old, whatever he was. So this nonsense, he's trying to impress people that don't understand us. But in our community, we all understand each other and we all respect each other. So I, I'm trying to be as nice as I can to, about this kid because he's a dummy and he's a young kid. And he's trying to impress people, I guess, or get some attention. I don't know what he's trying to do. But he has some very good ways, especially what he does with people that try to help him. So, you know, and I try to help the kid. You know, so that, that's so that, that, you know, we all force this kid back to the street where he belongs. You know, he's just a garbage kid. Unfortunately, he got bad ways. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, th th what I'm saying is the way he went about it and he pulled something out of the air just to kind of, I don't know if it's for ratings. I'm not sure. You know, I don't know the dude. I don't know nothing about his story. That's what I said. He'll be the Jerry Springer of podcasting. You know what is, Connie? You're an educate the way you talk. Everybody, listen, we don't got to, we don't got to, uh, uh, pacify the kid or, or the public. You know, you're, you're, a, you're an intellect. You're not a dummy. Right. I don't know what you did on the street. I know some of your story. But we all talk to each other with respect. That's the first thing is being a gentleman yeah. and changing your life and, and doing the right thing. But when you talk like this kid and you want to be little me, and forget me, I'll talk to Larry. Because me and Larry were best friends on the street. We know each other. We know a lot. Of, and we respect each other. We're getting friendly over the last you know couple of months. And, but Larry's a real guy. And he's a gentleman. And he, he's not a jerk off. So when you're trying to dress down, gentlemen, because you know that we're not going to come and get, get you anymore like we used to, so mm -hmm. you're gonna, you know you're going to get away with it, and you're going to try to impress guys using his name, forget my name, you're going to use his name and try to impress guys, we need to put him to rest and let people see what I just said. And for the dummies that are impressed, or the people that don't know any better, we just educated you right. about this life. Right. You know, if I had a problem with some Detroit gun, you know all I got to do is make a phone call. I call you, I go, do me a favor, reach this guy. Done. You know, it's very simple for us around this country. It hasn't changed for us either. We're all friends from That's around right. here, each state. Yeah, yeah, for real. No, I mean, so, that, that's the thing. He went about it and... The wrong way, well, and I get these the kids doing the same thing with me, and and you know, like my story, my end, similar but different, and it's the same thing. It's like, like you, you, I mean, I'm trying to be a gentleman here, I'm trying to be not that guy no more, and um, with the pop off well, of your mouth, it, we can do it this way, gun, the way we're doing it, because people got to say to themselves, why is this kid by himself? He's and no one's, he's got no connections with anybody why isn't he going to dinners when we're all going to dinners together why isn't he meeting w with us when guys are all going on vacation and not invited why isn't he part of our clique of guys from the past from every crew because all of us are, 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 are very close with each other so i'll talk about real guys all the time i when a guy's a punk or a guy's not a killer or a guy's not an earner or the guy's not a for real i call him out but the guys that are my enemies that are killers i respect them all and i talk highly of them on my shows because yeah. they're real guys. But I'm not going to let guys get away with who never threw a, a rock through a fucking window ever talk like this, this nonsense, and they, especially when they're trying to dress down our names. I said, so it ain't going to happen. The only thing is we're going to keep trying to educate the public that really don't understand it. When they're listening to some of this dumb talk, they don't know. They, they have no idea. Right. They're not us where they understand what's going right. on. Right. And, and I'm not sure. Can Larry hear me while I'm talking? I don't even yeah. Yeah, he can hear I hear. Let him know. I, I, I agree Larry with everything you said. Saying, you know, he, he, he can hear everything. Yeah. Okay. So really, that's in a nutshell. And, and, and really, it's unfortunate we're even wasting time talking about him instead of doing what we, we always do tell some you know interesting stories that the public wants to hear and, right you know and everybody knows i'm very aggressive but my message is always the same uh crime don't pay don't pay with your life unless you pay with your life and let's help kids get a good message not a shitty message this is a shitty message yeah. from, from a dummy you know amen man and that, what, what you said and the way you said it is i mean it makes a lot of sense there's a lot of people in this you know in this world who's like have an interest in the uh the whole mafia genre and the stories and the characters and the wars and blah, and they don't know how it really works they have no idea how it actually works 
And so that just to them, it's almost like video game ish and stuff. They just don't know. They never been in the streets and they don't know that type of respect that should be required. And all of us, I know the three of us are all trying to be changed, better men and not kind of get pulled back into that life. And we won't because they're smarter than that. But but these kids, some of them listen to this guy and, and or, or other guys talk about me, whatever, and they buy into it and then they feed into it. And like you said, all we got to do is kind of educate them into the realities. Well, about you what. know. Larry has a, a school for the people that don't know, and he's involved in martial arts. My friend Todd is, a, you know, and he's and for people that don't know, Todd knows me for a lot of years through his father. You know, a lot of people don't know who he is. He's a very good friend of mine. This guy Todd Little, and Jimmy wrote on his thing. He said jujitsu. This he doesn't know anything about jujitsu. Jitsu. These are some of the dumb lies. So my friend Todd said to him, "Now Todd's an older guy too. He's not a kid. He's in his forties. He goes, listen." You ever threaten me again because you send them threatening messages? I'll come down to Bath Avenue, come to the corner, and I'll you know, and, and I'll show you what you know about jujitsu because Todd is a legitimate fight. He is involved with legitimate, uh, right. with, with, with legitimate organizations. So when guys are talking and manipulating the public up for his own self interest, like like Jimmy's doing, then 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 and, and I blame him. And I'm going to say one thing, and I'm going to leave it at that because I'm friendly with Sammy. And I'm talking about Sammy Gravano, and he needs to take the blame for this because at the time he put this dummy on his show mm-hmm. because he wanted to use him and abuse him. And Jimmy did everything but put his hand on the table and jerked Sammy off under the table. <laughs> so, you know, that's Sammy's fault for giving this kid the confidence to believe that he could come out. And Sammy doesn't know the kid because I went, I did Jimmy a favor. I went to Cleveland. I did a charity event. And Sammy asked me, you know, who's this kid? What, you know, my daughter's there. I go, don't worry, Sammy. I'm here with Karen. She's fine. So he should have never put the kid on the show. He should have never used them as a, as a prop to show how he can abuse them. And the kid will just sit there like a dummy. And, you know, that's not Cozen Ostry. Cozen Ostry is putting somebody like Larry that was on the show, who's well versed and schooled and around his life since he's a baby. And somebody that's going to talk intellectually about the street life and give people a perspective of how it works. This is what, most of us try to do anyway. Yeah. You know, people might not like the way I talk. Maybe they like the way you talk. Maybe they like the way Larry talks. But I'm a real aggressive guy when I talk. Everybody knows that. And so maybe you don't like the way I speak. Then watch your show or watch Larry's show right. or read Larry's book. But we all have a message and we convey it with honesty. When the guy's not conveying with honesty, it's an issue. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Again, well said, you know, I know I, I'm, I'm a lot like you, man. I, I'm, you know, people ask me about you and I'm like, I don't know the guy's story. I know very little, but I do believe, you know, he, he and I are very similar in the regard. I'm a very aggressive guy and I would similar acted similar in the street. So I can relate to you very well, actually. And you articulate really well. And, you know, and I can see that you're not that guy no more, but you know, you still were who you were and that doesn't change anything. So now you could take the kind of that street mentality and, and Larry too. And, and myself and use it in an intellectual way, like you said, to entertain and to um, educate, but not to cause start these little childish beefs and, and, and things like that. So I appreciate that, man. Larry, is there anything okay. you want to add? No, I tell you what, I, I, I'm along with him. I'm going to do the show with him uh, this week and, and I'm going to put it to rest. It's not worth I said he's a pimple that we're bursting and move on. All right, cool. Well, John, man, I'll, I'll give you a text or a call, man. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you guys always, anytime. And, you know, let's just keep passing the positive message. Oh, by the way, uh, Donna, I'm involved in a project. It's going to be a 10-part series. Larry's involved in a project with us. It involves, uh, as the executive producer, Nicholas Pelleggi, my friend Thomas from Italy, and uh, a bunch of our friends. So uh, I hope everybody, you know, look forward to that and look us up oh, yeah. on my podcast, my book. And uh, for sure, mafia. I'll promote it. I'll have you on you. Anything, you know, anything you need, bro. I'll, I'll hook you up. Anything I can do to help, man. I'm just... And anything I can do for you also. And Lara, I'll talk to you soon. All right, buddy. All right. You Thanks, John. Right. Thank you guys. Have a good weekend. You too, brother. Bye. Bye. Right. So that kind of, he bro. did a good job summing it up, man. I mean, yeah. it is, it is what it is. I, I don't know he that. Had, he he had know? his version of, of, of this guy that, you know, pretty, similar to mine, but had, you know, personal experiences. So it was good.
I think good. I think he made a mistake by opening up this can of worms. Again, I don't know the guy, but based on what you're saying and he's saying, I don't know what he's got in defense. I mean, he kind of sounds well, like he just he, grabbed something out of the air for, for ratings. I think, and I think he hit it on the head. He's not uh, the brightest bulb in the chandelier. So he may try to keep it going somehow. The Sammy but, thing probably gave him a lot of confidence. Oh, Sammy the Bow wants to probably, know. So, and so and then whatever. it goes. Hopefully he goes back under the rock he was hiding under. Eh, you know? And God bless him, man. Don't wish yeah. I don't wish I don't yeah. wish anything bad on anybody, but just be careful how you yeah. talk to well, be careful how you approach people. Himself. Yeah, he yeah. Did it to himself. So all right, listen. Um, it's almost work time. Thank you so much for the emergency, my two cents. Yeah, no problem. The emergency bro. version. And let's uh, let's do one uh, on you know the good stuff next week. Okay, for sure, man. We'll pick like a day. We always do. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk a little bit. I'll talk to you a little bit more about some of the other things that are going on too. Yeah, text me, you know, afterwards yeah. and we'll we'll um, yeah, he's he's asking me for the link, Johnny. So he wants to see it too. So yep. all right. Yeah, all right, man. Yeah, if Thank you can do it tomorrow, there's probably not much editing. I yeah, no, just, no. Okay. Just all, all right. we got everybody we'll else. Later. Everybody else, by the way, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share it. Make sure you comment. We want to hear your thoughts. And you know, this comes from genuine guys, man. There's not, you know, I don't, there's nobody attacking anybody for no nefarious reason other than, you know, defense. It is what it is. And so thanks for tuning in. And make sure you, um, you know, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. I know a lot of guys are going to watch this video. You probably don't even know my channel. Watch some more of my shows. You'll dig them, you know, some more than others. I hope you appreciate me and Larry. And God bless. And we'll see you next time. We out. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you soon.